Welcome to Red House Design interior lighting setup tutorial. Today we are working with this uh, modern interior uh, setup as you can see in here. So let's go ahead and start setting up some uh, lights. But first I'm going to uh, turn on emissiveness on uh, some of these materials so they appear like a light source. So I selected these uh, light bulbs I'm going to bring the emissiveness of the material up. We have a couple of spotlights here. And once again, I select the material. Bring the emissiveness. This one a little higher because it's a quite a small uh, light source. A couple of more spotlights in here. Select the material. Bring up the emissiveness. Once again, it's a small area, so we put a little more on it and same thing in here with these uh, spotlights somewhere around here these are going to be close, quite close to the camera so uh, not to overdo it confirm let's go back to photo mode to check our uh, scene that we uh, preset previously now I can see this is uh, a little too strong so I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go to a lens flare and bring the uh, brightness down, faster brightness, and isolating bright pixels as well. Now uh, I'm going to go through all the effects uh, at the end. But first, let's bring some lights into our scene. So I'm going to turn on the first layer of uh, lights. We need to go to objects mode. And here we have this uh, chandelier or a, or a pendant light above the dining table. Now it looks uh, pretty, pretty simple light, but it is actually quite complex to set it up. As you can see, I have 15 lights in here. I have two different types. I have area light and I have uh, or omni light, and I have spotlight in here. So uh, first, I apply these. Um, Let's deselect them all. I'm going to choose uh, one of the uh, one of the Omni lights, as you can see in here. Now, this uh, light emits uh, uh, from the light source emits light in all directions. That means 360. The disadvantage of this light is it does not cast shadows, and it does go through materials. It would go to the other side of the wall. So uh, we are just basically using these lights to brighten up the, the area in 360 around this uh, light and I'm complementing it with, uh, with another type of light that we have in here and these are uh, spotlights. Now the spotlights will cast shadows and that's what we want because as you can see we have this uh, kind of a hexagonal rim around it so uh, from the light bulbs there should be shadows uh, being cast from, these, uh, from the frame onto the table wall and also the ceiling. So how we do that, we're going to use a couple of spotlights on each light and uh, we're going to angle them down. That's the first set. Here is the, um, the type of spotlight I'm using. It's a narrow beam uh, spotlight, a bright color. And here is the, um, the illumination or the brightness uh, value. And I have another set of uh, spotlights and these are angled towards the ceiling because uh, obviously since these lights are emitting 360 uh, we need some shadows on, on the ceiling as well so I'm using once again the same spotlights I'm just angling them into different directions on to the, the wall in here and also on the ceiling <clears throat> as you can see the same type of spotlight same brightness same value and uh, same uh, color so when we go back to photo mode to preview these lights and I press F8 on my keyboard. Now we can see all these shadows in here. And these are from the spotlights. If we did not have the spotlights in there, there would be no shadows in here and no shadows on the table either. And that would not look realistic at all. I'm just gonna quickly uh, bring the exposure down because this is simply too bright so around here. So once again, I press F8 and this is much more realistic, okay? So we go back to build mode and turn on another layer of lights. Here we have these spotlights in the kitchen. Small spotlights in here, as you can see. So uh, when I select one of them, 
we can see once again this is a narrow beam uh, uh, spotlight uh, the same uh, temperature all the color, color of uh, these lights I want to be daylight or cold light uh, here is the value of brightness a little brighter than uh, than the one from the table because they need to reach all the way uh, on the floor they all have the same value and they're all angled uh, towards the floor so when we go back to photo mode select our scene and press F8 on the keyboard to preview now you can see uh, these spotlights in here here are the shadows being cast uh, from those cupboards uh, on, uh, in the kitchen and there is one more light in here I forgot to mention this uh, ghost light and it's being created by uh, using uh, a line light in Illumion there it is a line light here is the shape you can adjust the width and the length to fit your uh, fixture and I'm angling this uh, this light towards the ceiling now this type of light will go or penetrate the material so you have to be very extra careful because if I angled the light from uh, towards the towards the, the room it would go through this uh, ledge uh, on the kitchen uh, ceiling and that's not what I want obviously so that's why I'm angling the, the light towards the ceiling because it doesn't uh, doesn't matter if it penetrates uh, on the outside because we will not be able to see it so that's how I created the ghost light here are the values once again a daylight or cold temperature light and the value of the brightness you need to combine the brightness with the fall off so you need the uh, you will re reach or uh, get the desired effect now I'll go back to photo mode you already previewed all these lights you can see when I press F8 these all these spotlights will cast shadows the line light will not cast any shadow Let's move on to uh, another layer of lights. I turn them on. It's these spotlights in here, in the hallway, and also uh, on these uh, little shelves and uh, in the ceiling, or all these small uh, spotlights. I'm gonna select one of them. I'm using a little uh, wider angle uh, spotlight in here. One second, the temperature, daylight, and the value of brightness. And when we go back to for the mode and our scene I press F8 now you can see the difference straight away here are the, the shadows being cast by these uh, spotlights also on the shelf from, uh, from this uh, decoration in here next up going back to build mode our uh, last layer of uh, lights or second to last it is uh, these spotlights in the living room select one of them here we can see uh, the, the shape of the spotlight is a narrow beam um, or angled uh, spotlight the brightness a little higher because it is, it is a little further away from us and also the color, temp color temperature is uh, white or daylight uh, once again we have one more uh, light in here this um, floor lamp I'm using two of the spotlights in here uh, if I used uh, Omnilight or uh, the omnidirectional light uh, in here it would uh, penetrate this material and it would not look realistic at all so um, I'm using two spotlights instead so one is being cast downwards one is upwards and it is uh, creating the effect that the uh, lampshade is not transparent and the light is only uh, being emitted upwards and down as well now uh, I'm using a different color of light for this one this is a warmer light as you can see the temperature is uh, higher here is the value of brightness a little higher so it is uh, distinguishable or visible uh, in the corner so let's go back to uh, photo mode oops there we go back to interior I press F8 on the keyboard to preview uh, all these lights you can see the shadows uh, being cast from this uh, from this uh, floor lamp of the surrounding area and also the shadows from uh, these little uh, coffee tables and a little sofa or puff from the spotlights on the ceiling and now I'm just gonna quickly turn on the last layer of uh, lights that's all the outside fixtures uh, just to create a little bit of depth 
uh, on the port behind it, so uh, that is not uh, important to show. And those were actually uh, in the other uh, tutorial for the landscaping or the exterior uh, lighting uh, video. So you can check that one as well. So let's go back to, uh, to our photo mode, our preset scene, and I'm just gonna go quickly through, um, through all the effects. Now we're gonna start with the uh, analog color lab I'm using in here. Uh, it is a couple of presets in here, as you can see how they are changing. I'm using this one that is, uh, I think, second to last. Yes, second to last, and here is the amount, so I can blend it uh, perfectly with my uh, previous uh, setup. I like it uh, somewhere in here, kind of creating a colder effect or atmosphere, since we are using mostly uh, daylight fixtures in here, or a daylight uh, temperature of, uh, of, the, of the bulbs or lights. So let's go back uh, to our next uh, effect. We have a lens flare for this um, flare or a halo effect uh, around all these uh, spotlights and the light sources. So uh, you work with the master brightness mostly, I'm going to bring it down just a little bit, and also uh, isolating the bright pixels. So only the brightest uh, areas, which are the lights in your, um, in your scene, kind of pop up and you can, uh, you can create the, the lens flare effect around them. Moving on to next, uh, next effect. This is just, uh, just for the uh, exterior mostly. I'm using one of the presets from uh, Lumion, Evening Sky, which is one of them. Uh, this one is only affecting the, the light coming through uh, the windows into your scene. So I'm bringing the brightness up so I get a little more light from the outside coming, uh, coming in. It will affect uh, slightly your scene. Uh, sun, I'm disabling because I'm using all the light from uh, the real skies and mostly obviously from our lights. Uh, sharpening tool, just to bring the intensity up a little bit. Uh, exposure, uh, here you are. You can adjust the uh, exposure value of, uh, of the whole, uh, whole picture. I think uh, it should be uh, about right. You need to do a couple of the renders, uh, test renders, obviously, to find the best balance. Uh, moving on, next up is color correction. Now uh, we're using a colder uh, temperature, so we're moving the slider towards the towards the left a little bit, create a colder atmosphere uh, tint as well. Uh, brightness uh, goes uh, down just a little bit, and I'm bringing up the contrast. As you can see, I have a lot of spotlights in here and light fixtures which will cast very strong and sharp shadows. So we want a lot of contrast in our scene. So perhaps just a little higher as well. Done with the color correction. Next up, reflections. We have a couple of reflective surfaces in here. The most important is obviously the floor. As you can see, it is glossy. So we'll have a lot of reflections in there. And also the table in here, which is made of uh, marble. So it is uh, very glossy. We'll get a couple of reflections in there, as you can see over there. Not to forget to sp uh, turn on the speed ray reflections and we are done in here. Next up, uh, hyperlight. Since we are working with the interior, uh, hyper hyperlight is quite important. Uh, maybe we can bring the value uh, up just a little bit to get a nice bounce uh, in the dark corners as well. Uh, skylight. Once again, in here you can see uh, I'm limiting the amount of light coming from the outside that is uh, being reflected from uh, the outside surfaces uh, on my interior, so it is not uh, affecting my lights, lights too much, so I'm bringing the value of brightness down. Saturation can stay where it is. We are done in here. Uh, shadows, now this is quite an important for interior. Uh, I'm uh, moving the coloring all the way towards, uh, uh, the, towards right, which means the shadows will be cold. Or, or towards the blue spectrum. Same thing goes interior exterior, even though we are working with the, uh, with the interior. If I move it over there to the left, you can see uh, that th the scene is getting uh, warmer and that's not what I want. So I'm moving back to exterior and uh, the scene is getting uh, slightly colder. So that's what I want. Omni shadows uh, up, so I get a little bit of uh, detail in the dark corners. 
separation and now I'm turning off the soft shadows as uh, mostly I, I do in the interiors when I use a lot of uh, a lot of fixtures, a lot of uh, lights, so I get the, the sharp shadows from those spotlights, all these spotlights in here above uh, the dining table as well. So we're just uh, keeping the fine detail shadows on. Next up, chromatic aberrations, just bring the dispersion down only a little bit. And the last one is uh, depth of field. Now I want the interior to be uh, all sharp, so I'm choosing the, the distance somewhere at the end of, of the room, confirming, turning it on, it will automatically measure the distance and I'm moving the amount uh, up somewhere in the middle values and the foreground background almost all the way to background. That means the background will be blurred or out of focus and anything from my point all the way to, towards the lens should be nice, crisp and sharp. And that's uh, all the effects, so let's go ahead and uh, start our final render. In case you're interested in exterior lighting setup or a landscape lighting setup for this house, you have to head to uh, SRP Landscape Design Channel or New Millennium Design Channel respectively. Both of the links are in the description, but in the meantime, thanks for stopping by and see you next time.